Hi everyone, it's Jameson Watts and I've decided that I'm a YouTuber now, okay? Why? Because I want to be, kind of seems like fun. When I first heavily got into knitting, probably around 2016, I found knitting podcasts on YouTube and I got really into them for a couple of years. I watched a lot of those podcasts back then and I always kind of thought it was dorky, but I enjoyed it. So I watched them and I fell off for a few years. I didn't consume much of that. And recently I found myself really craving YouTube videos from knitters about knitting and yarn. I really, lately, am just enjoying things that are a little bit slower and mundane as far as like media. Um, so even like movies and stuff, I'm like enjoying movies that are a little bit slower paced and not super exciting. Watching a YouTube video where someone talks about like knitting and yarn for hours is so boring and yet here we are <laughs> i really like watching those videos and i, I uh, decided why not try creating some youtube videos i know i certainly could talk about yarn and my projects and my designs for hours if anyone wants to listen so we'll see maybe this will be a one-off maybe i'll keep doing it if it's fun and if people enjoy it Let's go for it. I'm also just recording on my iPhone, so the video and the audio is going to be what it's going to be. I have an overhead light and some very dull overcast afternoon, late afternoon lighting from some large windows, which is better than no natural light. But okay, if my YouTube channel pops off and I really enter my YouTuber arc, Okay, let's just say if I get 10k subscribers, <laughs> I would I would get like a decent camera and maybe a mic and invest in elevating you, the viewers, audio visual experience. Okay, but we gotta work together. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a YouTuber now. What's on my little list of things to talk about? Okay, what am I wearing? I am wearing, uh, this is my last design to come out. This is Beads of Joy. That came out in January. It is, I think it's my third modular design, which is a technique and a type of design that I have found I really love. And I see myself to continue making and designing modular patterns for the foreseeable future for as long as i'm designing it's so fun they're fun to design they're fun to knit they're fun to wear the way i got into designing modular patterns is because i've always been a noro yarn fan a big noro yarn fan which i'm proud of because I remember the first time I went to like a local yarn shop when I first was getting into knitting and crochet much younger, like in middle school, and the Noro caught my eye immediately. I made a beeline for the Noro yarn, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most like beautiful, precious treasure of an object ever. It's ex kind of expensive. I couldn't actually get any at that age. And then once I got into knitting as an adult and like could spend my own money on yarn, I started getting into Noro pretty quickly. And through the years before I started designing of using Noro yarn to knit other projects, other garments, I just realized that for taking an average pattern that's not really designed for a color changing, a slow color changing yarn, and using a slow color changing yarn, you don't always get the most out of that yarn that you could be getting. Like it's still gonna, anything that Enoro, I'm gonna find beautiful. But I realized, for example, the most common scenario I was finding myself in was that I might knit 
a, let's say, a bottom up sweater or top that starts in the round. So I'm starting at the hem and knitting in the round all the way to the armpit. And you know, let's say it's 300 stitches in the round. And then I get to the armpit and I split the front and the back and switch to flat knitting. And suddenly I have 150 stitches. So what's gonna happen is that all of the fabric underneath the armpit, are, maybe they have stripes of color that are two inches wide. And then I get to the armpit and they're suddenly four inches wide, right? So there's like an obvious disparity of the way the colors are getting broken apart on the sweater. And I realized that, and I didn't mind, I, I have plenty of old Noro pieces that I still wear and love that kind of have that effect. But once I got into design, I actually remember I bought some Noro yarn to make like a, a, a cozy classic raglan, which I actually have by Jesse May. I have two cozy classic raglans in Noro, and I love both of them. But this was around the time I just maybe put out Earth and Air, my first garment pattern. And I was like, okay, so I'm starting to design now. And I had this yarn and I was like, you know what? As much fun as it would be to just like be cozy and knit a cozy classic raglan, a pattern I've knit a few times before. Why don't I see if I can come up with something original? And I was like, okay, how can I solve the problem of the way the colors of Noro gets broken up in other patterns? And I thought the, the way that I can make Noro the most beautiful is to have smaller sections of fabric and smaller segments uh, rather than just one large panel of a sweater that's either in the round or front and back or something. And Mystic Square was my first modular design that has a square in the middle. And it's almost like a log cabin-y kind of pattern where you have a rectangle on the side that extends past, and then one that starts here and extends past on this side. And uh, yeah, so it's five rectangles put together modularly. And if you've never knit one of my modular patterns, I highly suggest it. It's a really fun process knit. I mean, I love the finished result too, but as far as like en enjoying the actual knitting, it's pretty high on my list, those modular patterns. Uh, especially if you're working with a color changing yarn, that in itself already makes the process of a knit more exciting to watch your colors change. But the technique is super easy. It's knitting stockinette for so far, all of my modular patterns are in stockinette. And then it involves picking up stitches. Like you finish a piece, bind off, it's done. You have one piece. And then you're gonna be picking up stitches on a section of that piece and then casting on a few extra and knitting another piece where if you've ever done any kind of like applied border, like a lot of times that thing, that type of technique would be like on a shawl where you're picking up stitches and you're slowly eating up those stitches as you work on a separate piece that's getting attached. That is the same modular technique that I use. So pretty much every other row will end with like a, a purl two together that's attaching one of those picked up stitches directly onto the edge of the previous block of fabric that you knit. I don't know if this is making sense. Just knit one of my modular patterns, okay? Even if this makes no sense, I think it'll make sense if you look at the pattern. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is Beads of Joy, the most recent one, because it looks like beads. Mm -hmm. And the yarn is Noro. I, I think it's called Noro Yukata. I'm pretty sure about that. And uh, this yarn comes in 200 gram balls, so I just needed two balls to knit it. I think the pattern has five sizes, I wanna say, and I think this is size number three. It's either three or four, but I think it's three. So yeah, okay. And let me talk a little bit about where I am. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know a little bit of my lore. 
at this point, but if not, let me reiterate. I am currently, I'm in my apartment that I've lived in since November in Zagreb, Croatia. Kind of random, right? I primarily came here because one of my oldest, bestest friends lives here. Another piece of my lore that many of you probably know, but if you don't, I studied Chinese. I have a degree in Chinese studies. My, my undergraduate studies were in Chinese and in violin. And I studied abroad when I was 20 years old in 2013 for a year in Shanghai. And while I was studying there, I, I made a lot of friends, but I made um, really a close lasting friendship with one of my classmates in my language classes who is a Croatian girl, now a woman, but like, oh my God, we were kids. We were like 19 and 20 years old when we met. Um, my friend Anna is Croatian and uh, I knew I would always want to visit her in her home country and see and experience Croatia. And uh, like last spring or something, I was just looking into uh, coming to Croatia as a tourist, just to come for a visit. I was looking at how much flights cost and I was seeing if there were any COVID and vaccine requirements that I would need to present or prepare to get in. And when I was looking at the requirements, I saw that there were different requirements for different types of people coming. That's normal, right? Whether you're coming for business or tourists or whatever. And I saw one that was for digital nomads, which was a phrase I'd never heard. I was like, okay, what's that? Sounds interesting. And I did some research and it's this thing that a lot of countries have actually started doing in recent years where they offer either a residence permit or a visa for people who are either employed by a company in their home country, but can work remote anywhere in the world or for people who are self-employed like me. Um, so I was like, why not like come and see if I could actually live here for a bit? If, if you get approved for the permit, you can stay for up to a year. And that's what I've decided to do. I love traveling, but I also love living in different places. I loved living in China. Um, I've done shorter stints, like, you know, two months or something living in Montreal before, which I really enjoyed. I, like, traveling as a proper tourist is fun, but it's expensive and it's exhausting. It's really nice to just build a little life for yourself in a place for a while and just live your life somewhere else. So I decided to go for it. I came here in August and I have applied for the digital nomad residence permit and I'm technically still not approved. The bureaucracy here is really super slow. So I've been waiting for, I've been waiting since November for an answer. But the good thing is I'm legally allowed to stay here until I receive my answer. But I think everything is pretty, and check with my application so hopefully it goes through soon but yeah that is how i ended up in croatia friendship brought me here i'm really enjoying being here uh it's been really lovely to reconnect with my old friend uh, one of those friends who i did visit her once after we studied together she was still living in china and i came for like 10 days in 2019 which was very good timing before the pandemic hit to get in a trip to china and that was great but we're the type of friends that over the years other than that trip we're not talking all the time uh but then when we see each other we pick it right back up really beautifully so yeah it's been lovely to be here um, Croatia is great. I'm adaptable. I feel like you could put me in most places and I'm going to say it's great and I'm not going to have anything too serious to complain about. I think one of my main things that I enjoy complaining about, because in general I enjoy whining and complaining, is that the grocery stores here are small. I mean, I'm an American from Texas, like I'm used to H-E-B. 
which if you've never been to an H-E-B, it is a large, beautiful, well-stocked, beautifully put together grocery store with amazing service. And I'm someone who really enjoys grocery shopping. Here, I mean, this is Europe. This is an ancient city. They don't have space for a football stadium sized grocery store with 400 parking spots. There's a lot of really tiny grocery stores that are the size of convenience stores nestled within city streets. And if you want to go to a big grocery store, you have to kind of go to the outskirts of town, but I've adapted, unfortunately. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about some other things I've knit and designed that are coming up. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, see my stories, you've probably seen some of the stuff, not all of it. Uh, but I have this here. This is my next pattern to come out. It's called Best Best because it's a vest and it's the best. It is knit in La Vienne May Wensley Worsted, which I think is 100% Wensleydale, which I love any yarn that is giving me a breed specific fiber besides Merino. I mean, I love Merino, but I just think it's interesting to see something else on a label, right? So I'm really pleased that La Vienne May is working with Wensleydale. They also are working in Corydale. Corydale is a fiber I love as well. So yeah, what to say about this vest? The color of the yarn is pistachio, which is evident. It's such a pretty green. It's um, a tonal, so there's a little bit of variation in the value of the color. It's worked bottom up. Um, you can see there's the gorgeous, like really wide bands of one by one ribbing on all the edging. It's worked bottom up. You get to the, in the round, and then you get to the armpits and you split uh, front and back and switch to working flat. And you have uh, armhole shaping until you get to the V-neck. Um, the V-neck has this beautiful mitered center here. I'm like, I don't want to get up, but I'll hold it out to the phone so you can hopefully see it better. But I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's, it's simple, but it just looks so clean. And that is exciting to me. Um, this is still in testing. A few people have finished. You can probably see a couple of images of this on Instagram with hashtag best best, but I will warn you, normally I don't do this, but I have decided just to keep the hashtag simple, but it's a hashtag that already has like tons of other posts not related to my pattern. Our goal is that once this pattern comes out, we all buy it, we knit it, we wear it, we photograph it, we post it, and we get the hashtag best best dominated by best best, okay? But it's not like there's a hundred people using that hashtag every day. If you go on the recent post for that hashtag, you can find a few. Uh, and the testers that have, that have finished already, their projects are looking really beautiful. What else to say about this? I mean, here's the back, simple. I, you do a three needle bind off to attach the shoulders. You could also Kitchener if you are a Kitchener girly, which I am not. I mean, I'll do a Kitchener on a, the toe of a sock. That's usually the only time I do Kitchener. I don't do it often enough to remember it, so I Google it every time. And every time I Google it, I can never remember which link, like which website has the instructions that I like because I, I like don't need a video. I just need, and I don't need any, unnecessary information. I need like the most succinct written instruction for Kitchener. Uh, another fun detail that I'm really happy with is you can kind of see here, just here, the shaping on the back of the ribbing for the collar. I realized as I was working on this pattern, the grading and knitting the sample that 
having the, the ribbing be so long, this ribbing is like, I don't know, two and a half inches long, could kind of create, because you have, like the actual body of the vest is much deeper, like the, the, the V-neck of the vest itself, the stockinette portion of the vest is much wider and much deeper than the finished vest because I'm accounting for the fact that the ribbing is gonna be so long, right? And the way that you have to have some, that's an armhole, where's the, the neck? The way that you have to have this mitered portion in the front to give this the nice V shape, you also, I realize the same could be applied on the shoulder at the back of the collar, just to make sure that you don't have your collar, like too much fabric bunching up or sticking off your shoulders. We don't want that. So just some really subtle, beautiful shaping. I love to look at the like, decreases and increases done over ribbing. It's always satisfying looking to me, this little triangle of stitches disappearing. I'm probably gonna watch this footage back and like every time I'm trying to show you a detail on a knit, it's gonna be completely impossible to see what I'm talking about. But if that's the case, okay, let me know. I'll try to fix it. And also subscribe to my channel. <laughs> and then when I get my 10K, I'll get a I'll get a real camera, maybe. If I actually enjoy this, that's the other part. But I'm having fun so far. Right? Mm -hmm. What else is new? I closed my notes. I don't think I need them that much, but I did them, so I want to look at them. Okay, so this is Best Vest. If you're excited about this, it comes out this month. It's now March. I think that, I think it comes out March 24th. Is that a Friday? If that's a Friday, then that's it. If that's not a Friday, then it's around that date on a Friday, okay? Look forward to it. Oh my gosh, I just want to fold this at least a little bit nicely. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I have coming, I just properly showed it on Instagram for the first time to announce the test knit. And actually after recording, I need to go through test knit applications and launch that test knit. And that is for my new raglan pattern dappled lace raglan which is a top down raglan with lace all over it is knit in ritual dyes undine which i have some skeins of here in such pretty colors and this is from Ritual Dyes from Rachel in Portland, Oregon. I love the label, very pretty. It is a four ply fingering weight yarn, 60% organic cotton, 40% linen, and it's 382 yards to 100 grams. Uh, what to say? This yarn is very lovely to work with. Jessie May has done a lot of her designs in this, and she's always extolling the virtues of Undine. And one of the things that she always remarks is how uh, tightly twisted the plies are in a really satisfying way, which I now see for myself after having worked with the yarn, especially when you are doing lace techniques, like a lot of decreases and stuff. Uh, it's really nice to have that tighter twist and apply because it makes the yarn really difficult to split. I actually don't think I split this yarn even one time and I've already finished one sample of the sweater which I'll show you now and that is in this color. This is peony I believe. Yeah peony. And if you caught my story on Instagram announcing this test knit, then you saw this being worn by my friend Anna, the one who I met in China all those years ago. And here she is. I'm quite happy with it. I love a top down raglan, it's totally seamless. There's no flat knitting. There's a little flat knitting if you wanna work shoulder shaping, which this sample has, but that's optional. I've written 
into the pattern starting with or without shoulder shaping. It's neck shoulder shaping. It's the knitter's choice. And yeah, I on this sample, I've left every edge. I wouldn't say unfinished, they're finished, right? It's not like there's live stitches, but just the most basic finishings for an edge, which are, this is just the cast on edge of a long tail cast on. Uh, and then the sleeves and, and body are just a regular bind off which for the, for the right design, I really love not having like too much of a edging or finishing. You have to be careful that you get the tension just right because like if you bind off really, really ultra super loose, then that's not gonna look nice if you leave it as is and then picking up stitches and knitting a band of ribbing or an I-cord can totally fix the appearance of a loose bind off, right? So when I know I am gonna wanna leave an edge plain, I always am really feeling for that perfect tension where it's just matching, right? It's matching the gauge of the fabric as it sits unstretched. Does that make sense? Right, like this lace could probably stretch more than the bind off could stretch, right? And that's okay. I want the bind off to kind of keep things neatly exactly how they want to sit naturally. This sweater has positive ease, meaning it's a few inches bigger than your body. So it doesn't need to stretch. Um, and conversely, you usually don't want to have a cast on or a bind off that's super tight, right? That would cinch in this lace unnaturally. I'm showing you the wrong side of the fabric. Here we go. Enjoy the right side of the fabric. So yeah, this was very unpleasant to design, but very fun to knit. <laughs> I love knitting lace. If there's if I could only pick one like special technique of knitting that I get the most enjoyment out of, it is lace knitting for sure. And if I had to pick one technique that I dislike the most, it's cable knitting. Okay. But I'll get into that another time. There's not much to get into other than I, I don't like it. Okay. It slows me down. Whereas lace, I can really get going quickly. There's something about when you're working, whether it's off written instructions or a chart, you know, you really have to look at it for those first few repeats, but then once you get it in your head, you don't need to look at the instructions anymore, but you have to keep the momentum going of your knitting. If you like put it down, you may forget, and you don't want to have to look at that chart again and figure out what row you're on and what the repeat is, right? So for that's for me at least. Once I get that repeat in my head, I just go, 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 because I like never want to really stop in the middle of a round on lace. And this looks a little bit complicated because it's like lace all over. It's very frilly, it's very ornate, but the lace itself is pretty basic. It's a simple motif. It's eight stitches wide, it's eight rows long. It only has the action. It only has the lace techniques on every other row. And then every other row, is just a plain knit row. And then as far as the actual stitches that are going on and being used, it's just knit two togethers, SSKs, and yarn overs. You don't have any uh, center double decreases or any other type of uh, decreases other than knit two together, SSK. No, like, no fancy extra rare lace techniques. It's the most basic three stitches to create lace. So that's great. I love that. I call it unpleasant to design and let me talk about that. I've done, this is my third raglan pattern that I've designed and oh my gosh, every time it's like a headache and every time I finish one it's a, it feels like a big it's like climbing a mountain and it's a big accomplishment once all the numbers are happy and the pattern is written and everything makes sense. And I always think it's gonna be so much easier the next time I do it 
and in a way it is like I'm definitely learning and getting better at my skills as a designer with everything that I do but every raglan I've done is its own unique puzzle that needs to be figured out and I also realized as I was working on this I've done three raglans and all of them have lace so it's like I've yet to just do a simple stockinette raglan which would probably be much less of a headache um, than dealing with stuffing a lace motif into this interesting shape. But yeah, I've been working on this a lot. I think from swatch to sample to finished written test version of the pattern was about a month. And I knit this, I knit this sample in like like nine days or something. I was really knitting. And let me, let me show you, I have another sample. So I have this other yarn. I showed you this one first as well. This is the color Rye. And I'm also knitting a dappled lace raglan in this yarn. And this one's for me. And I actually started this one first. And I've just gotten through the yoke. I really love the color. I'm excited to wear this. I got through the yoke and tried it on. It fits great. Um, but when I put it on, I realized that I was really going to like this sweater more if I went to the trouble of knitting full length sleeves and full length body. And I was already planning on knitting the second sample cropped in the short sleeves, which is much faster. Even though I'd already gotten all the way through the yoke, like to knit a full length body after this yoke and full length sleeves is a lot of knitting. I feel like it's as much knitting, if not maybe more, than just knitting this smaller size altogether cropped. So, yeah. And primarily, I'm marketing this pattern as a short sleeve cropped sweater because that, that is the initial idea of how I imagine this design. And I also know that is what the majority of people will knit from just observing our community and the way people have interacted with other patterns of mine. Uh, some of my patterns are designed to be long sleeve or three quarter sleeve and the vast majority of knitters just take it and make it short sleeve, which is fine. I love for people to modify my or any other pattern to their liking and to have the skills to do that is great. So I knew that I wanted this to be, as a design, more short sleeve, but when I tried on this yoke, I just knew for me personally and where I'm at with my style and what I like wearing, that I'm really gonna love wearing this if I bother to make it full sleeve, full length. So that's the plan for this. I can take my time a little bit finishing this because this pattern will come out Friday, April 21st, the day before my birthday. So that's uh, in a little over seven weeks. So I just need to finish this in about five, six weeks, give myself enough time to take some nice film photos as I like to do before that release. And uh, yeah, it's going well. And I hope People are excited to knit it. I'm interested to see because I have several patterns with lace elements, but this is my laciest lace. This is a proper lace motif. Like my other lace is very minimal or just like some type of mesh. I have a lot of mesh designs, uh, but this is a proper little frilly motif, but nothing to be afraid of. If you have lace knitting experience, I think this it's perfectly approachable. And if you want to learn lace, learning to knit lace for the first time in a garment, in a raglan, is not the easiest choice, but if you're determined, you'll figure it out. I would like to think that the pattern is well-written. I think my patterns generally, I get that feedback a lot, but people are like, okay, this was really clear. And people appreciate that. And, that makes me super happy. It's one of my favorite things to hear as far as positive feedback about a design. So 
yeah, this pattern has written and charted instructions. Something for everyone, okay? What else? I just want to talk a little bit about what I'm doing besides design. I feel like I've been working madly for months now, which, as I said, I studied violin and Chinese in my undergrad, and then I also have a master's degree that I finished in 20, 2021, yeah, in spring 2021 from Florida State University in violin performance. So I'm like a highly trained musician. And until moving to Croatia and living in Florida, I was gigging a lot. I was playing with many different regional symphony orchestras, mostly in the Northern half of Florida, which I really enjoyed and love. But yeah, where was I going with this? I guess to say that and when I first got into design, it was helping supplement the income I was making for music and slowly the balance tipped. And my music income was helping supplement my knitting income. And then moving to Croatia was a little bit scary because I had no guarantee that I was gonna find any work as a musician. And I haven't, I haven't found the same type of work that I would be well equipped for as I was doing in Florida here. So I am playing music, but it's just for fun at home for enjoyment. I'm not making any money playing music. So for the first time, knitting and design is my only income. And the reason I bring that up is because I was saying I've been working madly for months, but I've, it's been nice to see that I'm capable of it and to really get into my girl boss flow here in Croatia. Yeah. But besides design, I am still playing a lot. I'm a better violinist than I am a pianist, but I also play piano. And I've moved into this apartment that just so happens to have a beautiful upright piano. It needs a lot of work. It's out of tune. I don't think it's going to be worked on or tuned in my time here. I'm certainly not going to invest my own money on like fixing someone else's piano but that has not deterred me at all. I have been enjoying playing piano almost every day so much because I've actually been playing piano longer than I've been playing violin. I started piano when I was like seven years old and like I'm decently good at it, not as good as I am at violin, but it's just something I enjoy and I haven't lived in a house or an apartment that with a piano since I moved to Florida in 2019 until now. So it's been really exciting to just have access to a piano day to day. Love that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of piano playing at the end of this video, we'll see. Oh my gosh, I hope this video is still recording. I'm using the back camera on my iPhone so I can't actually see what the video looks like, nor can I see that it's still recording. Maybe my phone's dead. And you know what? If I've just been talking for like 45 minutes and none of it's recorded, then I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not doing this again. YouTube's over before it even started, okay? But yeah, I'm playing piano. I'm not really, I have my violin here. I'm not really playing violin just because I'm excited to have a piano and having, uh, piano is so easy. It's just there. It's never, I don't, it's not something that gets put away. I can always just sit down and casually play piano for as little or as long as I want. Like sometimes I literally play piano for 45 seconds and I am happy with that. And other times I play for two hours. Violin, okay, nothing's stopping me from playing for 45 seconds and being done if I want to, but I would never do that because it is a hassle. The violin needs to stay properly put away in its case. It's a fragile thing. My violin is like over 100 years old, right? So I just am too lazy. I never feel like taking it out, tightening the bow, putting on rosin, attaching a shoulder rest, tuning the instrument every time you play. But I did play for like 30 or 40 minutes, maybe last week, and it was the first time I had played since November. It's a little bit... It's a little bit shameful. I'm not ashamed, but it is a little bit shameful because I have the skills, I do enjoy it, I have a beautiful violin, it deserves to be played. But anyway, either I play it or I don't, okay? 
when I go back to America, which I assume I will at some point, I do fully intend to get back into the gigging scene because I like it. I really love playing violin in an orchestra. It makes me happy. Um, I'm going to the gym like a lot, which is so funny. I never thought I would be a gym girly, but I came to Croatia and said I'm gonna get swole, I guess. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like strength training and weightlifting and stuff, which is wild to see the transformation I'm going through and to see myself getting stronger has been really satisfying. Uh, the way it came about is really that I got diagnosed with diabetes last summer and I just totally flipped my lifestyle because I take my health seriously. Um, like that was a little bit sobering. So I immediately changed a, a lot the way I was eating. I like now eat a very low carbohydrate diet. I'm avoiding foods that will spike blood sugar, right? So carbs and sugar and whatnot. Uh, I eat more vegetables and meat and sugar-free chocolates and stuff like that, whatever I can find, which those types of like diet foods are not as common here as they are in America. Americans love a fad diet and like love to accommodate every little nutritional whim. So, but there's enough. But the way it relates to getting into the gym is that the other thing besides avoiding high glycemic index food, the other thing you can do to help regulate and keep your blood sugar low is to exercise, is to be active. And in the summer, it's really easy for me to be active when I have access to, to coastline and freshwater springs and Florida and pools and beaches because I love to swim and I'll swim every day if I can. And when I got here, I was able to swim here and there. And I also was just like exploring a new city and I was getting out almost every day. I would like, just for the sake of getting out of the house and I would go to a cafe or whatever, go shopping. And I was walking so much. Um, I was like not even taking public transportation that much cause I was just enjoying getting to be on foot and actually see the city slowly while also getting steps in and keeping my blood sugar super low. And then it got freaking cold. It got really cold here really early. It was like in the 40s already, I feel like in October, uh, maybe even September a little bit. So I stopped going out so much unnecessarily, especially as it dipped even colder. And I was like really missing getting my steps in and the positive effects of that on my blood sugar and also it helps me sleep better if I move my body. So I was like, okay, I had thought about joining a gym for quite a while, just playing with that idea, but never like had the confidence to do it. And also couldn't, just couldn't commit to it really. Cause I didn't want to like waste my money if I wasn't going to go, but I finally felt ready. I joined the gym here and I actually really like it. Surprisingly, I always, like when I commute home from the gym, I often will call a friend or something just so I can pass the time if I'm sitting on the train. And I can always notice that I'm laughing more, I'm listening more engaged, I'm in a better mood and I always go, uh-oh, working out improved my mood, I hate that. I love that, I love that it improves my mood. I just hate to admit that exercise is having a positive impact on my life as like, an exercise hater and someone who grew up fat from the earliest age I can remember and like felt excluded from physical activity, right? I was always like, okay, screw exercise, but yeah. Which still, still screw exercise, but it's also good, okay? So I go to the gym a lot. What else am I doing? I'm a gamer girl. I have a Nintendo Switch, which I haven't been playing too much, but I did just they added Game Boy, I talked a little bit about this on my Instagram story, so maybe you already saw this, but they added the Game Boy Advance games, a couple of them, to the Nintendo Switch. So I got on that and they had Zelda Minish Cap, which is a game I played on Game Boy Advance, probably in like sixth, fifth or sixth grade, like it would have been before the DS came out because I got a DS in middle school. Um, 
I've already kind of put it down. Every night I have my Switch like next to my bed and I'm like, I'm gonna play Switch and drift off to sleep. And then like being on my phone and texting and looking at TikTok always is way too alluring. But the couple hours I have put in Diminish Cap have been so cute and so fun. So hopefully I keep up with docs. It's enjoyable. I'm also playing on my PC, which I didn't, my, I got this laptop a couple years ago specifically for work purposes. I didn't know it could even handle a game until I just tried it and then it ended up working. But I'm playing Heroes of the Storm, which is a MOBA type game. Probably 90% of you don't know what I'm talking about and don't care. But okay, like either listen and learn or you can skip. I'm not gonna force you to stay here, but this is for the girls who, who know. This is for the 10% who know and who care. And for the rest of you who are just humoring me or want to learn, okay? But it matters to me, so I wanna talk about it, all right? Okay? I started playing Heroes of the Storm, which is a MOBA game. Massively online, like multiplayer online battle arena. Yeah, multiplayer online battle arena game, uh, which is a popular genre the past decade, really. More, I guess, I don't know. But this specific type of MOBA game, where you're on teams of five and you're like trying to conquer the other team's base, that's really been mostly popular. I feel like 2010, 2011, that, that's when League of Legends came out. And I, I was big into League of Legends in the early years. I played for a couple of years. And actually, Anna, my Croatian friend here, she and I connected in China over the fact that we both played League of Legends and we started playing together a lot. And she, neither one of us plays League anymore, but she started playing Heroes of the Storm. This is also in the same genre as Dota, for you gamer girls who know, okay? And if you don't know, as I said, whatever. But Heroes of the Storm is Blizzard's version of a MOBA game in the style of Dota and League of Legends with a bunch of different heroes you can play that come from all of their other games. They come from Diablo, Starcraft, Overwatch, and I, I started playing just because it's something online I can do with my friend when we're both like too tired and don't have enough time to actually go hang out in person. We can just meet up online for a quick game or two or three or four. And I just did it to connect with my friend, but I found that I'm actually really enjoying it and even playing by myself sometimes. So that's my gamer girl update. What else? Um, what do I want to do more of that I'm not doing? I want to get into drawing. I have never like properly been taught or like studied any drawing or art techniques, but I've always liked it. And I've gone through a few phases now. In the past couple of years, I've picked up drawing off and on. And in like September, October, I was starting to draw a little bit almost every day for probably like three or four weeks and really enjoying it, really seeing my style come into its own and improving. And then I had a little trip. Oh, I moved. I moved from an Airbnb into this apartment and that just disrupted my continuity and I didn't get back, back into it. But I've done like one or two drawings in the past week and hopefully I keep it up. If not, that's okay. I can do it whenever I decide I want to do it, but it's something that I really like doing. And I just gotta sit down and do it. You know, I can do a drawing in five minutes and whatever. It doesn't have to be good or anything. I wanna make a website. That's, this is a business, this is a girl boss task, but that's a goal for the year is to get a website up and running. I, I tried to do it like maybe last summer and I like started on Squarespace and within like 10 minutes I was like, I'm gonna throw up and cry. I hate it. I hate doing this. I don't wanna learn how to use their website builder. And I know it's probably like the simplest thing out there. Like you don't need to know any coding or programming. You just need to take a couple hours and figure out which of their templates you wanna use and how to modify it through their website builder. But you got to be in the right mood to do that, okay? And I wasn't in the mood. And I don't know if I'll ever be in the mood, so it's something I've just got to buckle down and get done at some point. But that's a goal for the year, or something I want to do. Ugh, I want to knit someone else's pattern for once. Since I've really heavily gotten into design, I just don't have time 
to knit other designers' work. And there are so many talented designers producing so many beautiful patterns, new stuff's coming out every day that I love and that there's so much that I wanna knit and I rely on designing to make a living. So I'm always working on my own stuff now for a while, but hopefully I can just fit in some time. My, my friend Park, Park Williams, Emily Park Williams, another knitwear designer, prolific, always coming out with cool stuff I want to make. And I'm always, whenever she announced a test knit, I'm like, just send me the pattern, please. Like, I think I have time. I think I can do it. And I'll like, either I don't ever do it or I cast on and then I don't finish it. But it's the thought that counts. I really want to. And she is doing a vest soon, like a summery vest. That is so cute. And I was looking at the yardage requirements and it takes so little yarn. So we'll see, but I would really love to knit someone else's design for once in this life. Uh, I'm going to Germany to visit uh, another old friend who I haven't seen since my China days. That's exciting. It's gonna be wild to reconnect with someone I haven't seen in like nine years, but really fun. Uh, I'll be in Leipzig, Berlin, Frankfurt, Frankfurt, I don't know, I don't know why I did that. Frankfurt, it's, you know, it's embarrassing if I don't try at all, and it's embarrassing if I try, okay? I speak Chinese, okay? Like, I get somewhat of a pass. I'm not just completely modeling wool and useless, but... Where else am I going in Germany? I don't know, smaller towns other than those ones that I don't remember the names of, but we'll be like road tripping around. My friend is German and he'll be showing me some of his favorite places. I'll be meeting his, some of his family, some of his friends. So all of that's gonna be really sweet and exciting. And then I'm going to Austria at the end of March, just for a few days to, um, to Vienna, which is really close to Zagreb. It's like a two or three hour drive from Zagreb. And uh, I have concert tickets for me and Anna to go see Joe Hisaishi, the composer who's famous for composing the soundtracks to Hayao Miyazaki's Studio Ghibli films, is giving a concert in Vienna where he is conducting and performing some of all his original music, some of which will be... I think the only Studio Ghibli thing that is on the program is Princess Mononoke, but that's great. I love the soundtrack to Princess Mononoke. I'll probably cry. He's getting older. I've never seen him perform. It's like a bucket list experience. So I also haven't been to Austria or Vienna. So that's exciting. Uh, looking forward to the weather warming up. I want to get back to the coast. I mean, if I were at the coast right now, I would get into the frigid cold water and swim because I am a swimmer girly. I don't care what the temperature of the weather is. I like to put my body in water, but I am really looking forward to warm weather and properly lazing on the beach. Um, other than that, I will be working on new designs. If I ever record another video, I'll have more to show you. Uh, think mesh, probably two new mesh designs coming for summer and maybe we'll even do a mesh cow. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, I think it would be. Uh, just to give you a little bit more insight and detail, if you know my pure mesh pullover, think about that kind of fit and look and fabric, but in like a tank top, like a pure mesh tank, probably is what that'll be called and what it'll be. And then I'm doing something with a kind of similar mesh stitch, similar but a little bit different, actually a little bit simpler to knit, um, but similar to look at my holes, that, that stitch, but in a bottom up bat wing boat neck top, like almost like a swimsuit cover-up kind of top that I think is going to be really pretty. Those are in the works. And yeah, I feel like I've been talking for two hours. It's got to be an hour. I'll check my phone when I get up and it's, it's scary. It's scary to think that I would talk that long and it's scary to think that some of you might actually watch that long but if you did you're a girl's girl you're a real one thank you for watching that's really sweet and if we're all having fun then expect a new video maybe next month maybe next year who knows no promises bye